Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Incomplete Guide to Star Sector. It's been a few months, probably about, I don't know, six since we last spoke, and I have been out and about getting ready for this episode. Some of that was waiting, because in our fleet here we have this ship, the CGR Star Arc, it certainly is an arc, and it had four D-Mods, and I was waiting for those to evaporate slowly. And I also needed to get my hands on another griffin, or I wanted to at least. And that is for today, actually. What we're going to do today is we're going to go and head up to one of the two coronal hypershunts that we found, one here in Beta Ang and one up here in Gemma Kirchkawari. Kirchkawari. And we are going to fight the Doritos or the Omega ships that are there. And we're going to talk about possible strategies and the ships you want to bring out and loadouts and so on. Bearing in mind that being as this is the incomplete guide to Star Sector, I am not I am not the expert in fighting these things, you guys. I'm gonna be real with you. I am not the guy to go to because I typically have to save scum like eight or ten times to successfully beat these things, because there's kind of an element of luck, I find. Sometimes you end up with both of the ships kind of targeting one ship and they just won't unglue themselves and you just can't pry them free. So we're going to just hope for the best here. But we're going to talk about our fleet that we're bringing. We're going to leave... I don't want to sell, I want to leave, there we go. It's kind of weird having the commerce on your colonies because you then have an open market and you can accidentally sell your ships if you're not careful. Of course you can buy ships too, which is kind of cool. If they're actually any good. But we are going to leave you. Don't need you. We'll keep these guys. I'm going to bring along our small ships, but the only reason is that I don't really feel like having to redo their officers and remember which one goes where. Because I do have them set up in a pretty specific way here. So I'm just going to bring them with us and drag them around, I guess. <laughs> but we're going to bring along the Ziggurat. We're going to bring along both Invictuses, or I don't know, Invicti. And we're also going to bring along... Oh, these both have D-Mods still. Structural damage and increased maintenance. That's unfortunate. I didn't think I still had some damage here. But yes, we're going to bring along these guys for the ride. We will be flying the Ziggurat. That'll be us. Boop. And we're also going to bring along these guys up top here. And these two. Now, that one needs some outfitting. And let's go ahead and do that real quick. Although, I don't have any more Xyphos. That's unfortunate. Well, let's instead do... Do we do Sarissa's? Or do we do something a bit more aggressive? I'm thinking aggressive is a way to go here. I'm also feeling like maybe drone fighters. But I only have three of those. So we'll do this, and then we'll do that. Get some heavy, or storm leader, storm needlers. I normally wouldn't use these, but I saw this as a, I saw this in a video of someone who really just stomped on the Doritos. And the storm needlers, while they're kind of eh, they do have a constant damage output. As you can see, they have a refire delay of 0.1 seconds, and unlike the other needlers, like say, the heavy needler, they're not a burst fire, they just keep shooting. So they shoot 10 times a second, which ain't bad. Generally, though, you do want to avoid these in large slots, but for this specific battle, I think we're going to do it. And we are doing proximity mine launchers. Oops, and all these. Let's dump some vents here. See if we can get... There we go. And since this one doesn't have any point defense, we are going to add in some of that. What do you have? You know what? Yeah, we'll build in the expanded missile racks. Confirm. We'll add in the armored weapon mounts. And then we're also going to add in some Vulcans right here. Ah, not quite. Okay. Let's do... Let's just dump heavy armor. We probably could use it, but I think more importantly is 
we're going to need to actually add in some... What do we have VR over here? Okay. I want to add in some EMP resistance. That seems pretty important. Although, we're getting kind of tight on everything here, and I don't have any story points left. So, we might just see how we do with this loadout. Ooh, I don't know. So, now we'll ditch heavy armor. We're going to add in resistant flux conduits on both of these. There we go. And then we are going to finish out that. We're just going to bump up our vents here to match as closely as we can. Maybe even a little bit lower and have a few capacitors. And you actually get some bonus, so... There we go. This is fully matched up. And the remainder go into capacitors. All right. So what we have here is we have two legions. They're kind of our backup. I might want to try my first strategy first obviously. And then we'll go with these as our backup strategy. And my main strategy is Ziggurat, Invictus, Invictus, and if we can swing it, Griffins. Now I got a tip on these things from a user over on YouTube, Nemergix or N-E-Mergix, or I guess Northeast Mergix, said that the Griffins, I had them set up with regular three missile Sabos here. And that's great, except that these can dump all their ammo in six seconds because they have a one second delay. If I go over to them here, where are they? Here we go. One second delay. And we have six of them because of expanded missile racks. And what that does is it causes the ship to use its missile auto forge early. The missile auto forge is a kind of unique system that it only works once per battle. And what it does is it fully restocks all of your ship's missiles. Now, if you dump all of your missiles in the first six seconds, while your others are still 90 to 95% full, like say the Squall and these over here, which were previously harpoons, then it blows the system over here, and then you can't restock your Squalls or your other missiles later on. So I've changed this up where instead of the Sabos over here, I have the, sorry, instead of the harpoons over here, I have Sabos now, and that way, this gives us basically 54 seconds maximum before this tries to reload. These are also shorter range than the Squall, so they might not even get fired as often. Same for up here. I put Breaches on because they have a 10 second delay, and that gives us effectively 50 seconds minimum of time before it would try to use the system, giving the Squall hopefully enough time to mostly empty its stock before we even reload. And actually, because we have expanded missile racks, this is 100 seconds of time because we have effectively 10 batches of three or 10 salvos of three we can fire. The other thing that any Mergix proposed was that I should have the Griffins escort a ship. I've had kind of bad luck having cruisers escort other ships, but apparently the escort command specifically tends to put your escort ships behind the other ships. So you want to use fast long range and or carrier ships for escorts. So I'm going to give this a whirl. This will be able to fire over our ships because it has all guided missiles. And yes, these count as guided until the end of their trajectory. So yeah, let's give it a whirl. I think what we're going to do is we are going to not repair, I guess we're good here. And we do need to grab some more crew. We're going to leave all of this other junk here. There's that. Let's grab our crew. Boatloads of crew, or shiploads, I guess. And, oh, we're <laughs> 5,000 is the max we can take at once, apparently. And let's bring like 12,000. Or, you know, let's bring them all. Yeah, bring them all. Okay. So, there we go. I think we're about ready. And I already haven't made any changes to our ziggurat, although I did actually remove and replace the heavy needlers with hyper velocity drivers for the extra range and the fact that their burst is kind of shorter so sure they have like two seconds between shots but these things have kind of a longer burst so you need to stay unfazed longer with the hyper velocity drivers we can just sort of unfaze pew and then phase again so we're going to try that out and yeah i think we're ready so now we'll repair our ships and we are going to head out for 
one of these two. Let's do... I mean, it doesn't really matter. But let's do the one in Gamma Kerchikawari set. Kerchikawari. <laughs> Sheesh. Next. And we will just jump there from Samara Gate. So I'll see all of you once we're there. All right, everyone, we are here. I have saved right here because we are... We are likely to need to save Scum, given my luck here. But let's go ahead and we are just going to full burn, emergency burn, straight into these guys. We don't have solar shielding on our ships, so we need to get through here and lose as little combat readiness as possible. Looks like we lost, what, 1%? So we are doing fine there. Unfortunately, our legions did not lose either of their demods. Oh well. You're the one that's a little dicey because you have structural damage, but that's okay. So, we're going to go ahead and engage the Doritos. They are unknown entry unidentified vessels. So, let's go ahead and engage. We're going to transfer... No, we're not. Okay, good. We're golden. So, we're going to send out us, these two, and these two. Oh, wow, we can send them more out if we wanted to let them die. Okay. Nifty. Uh, you know what? Let's send you out. I've seen videos of monitors tanking all the damage from both of these at once, so maybe this will survive. I don't know. We'll find out. Now, the plan here is if either of these goes down, we bring out the Legion immediately. If we go down, then we hop on Legion and we come out. So let's see what we can do. We're going to have you escort you. You escort you. You know what? You just hang out with me, actually, for now. I don't want it going off on its own just yet. And we're going to try to stay pretty close in to our Invictuses because it's going to be our job to use our moats here to try, and the keyword is try, to kind of keep these guys from destroying the Invictuses. So I want you engaged. And I want you engaged. And that actually should do. We're going to go ahead and just shut you down for a minute. Yeah, look at that go. Look at that go. Beautiful. Ah, oh, no, stay off of him, dude. Oh, there goes one griffin already. <laughs> yeah. And our moats didn't do a whole lot on that thing, did it? I'm hoping to get up here so I can help. Okay, we got some damage on it, so it's going to back off here and try to repair itself. Let's freeze this guy out for a second. And we are going to dump our flux while that's happening. Yeah, no thank you. Just take on your shield monitor. Thank you. So that will give these guys time to deal some damage to this thing. Ugh, already like no haul on that one. That's real rough. Let's go ahead and zap that one again. We'll dump our flux here. Nope, no thank you. We're going to let our own moats come back here before we even bother engaging again. Here we go, here are our moats. They're shooting them out of the sky, but that's okay. Yes, thank you for venting. Finally, it took you long enough. My goodness, I might actually bring out one of you as well, and let's see, you are escorting whom? I'm not quite sure, but you are going to escort this guy here, and we're going to try to take care of this thing. Okay, zap him please. Bzz, 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 bzz. Yeah, that's what I thought. Ah, your engines are gone. Zap you again. Come on. Yeah, that's about what I thought. Take it. Ah. No, thank you.
Oh, I'm gonna get out of the way of this one. Do it. Do it. Do it. Come on. Oh, no, you've got a clean shot, man. You got a clean shot. Ow. Oof. Okay, I need to back off and vent. Like, really badly. He might not let us get that done, though. Let's see. Woo! Oh, we're gonna have to. Ouch. That stings a lot. Boop. Have some more EMP damage, my friend. Yeah, you're almost down, though. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Invictus come in clutch here. Artillery style. Have some more EMP, my friend. Yeah. Okay, so. We have destroyed this thing, but you'll see... It's about to start shimmering a little bit. And bloop! It breaks into basically three main parts here. Two small, one large. And then a few of these little tiny moats. I'm not sure what they're called. Can I read this thing? I'm not sure. Attack aspect. There we go. These are called sinistral armor breaker shards. Right there. And then this should be the dextral shard. Oh, this is the attack facet. Okay. So we're going to have to deal with all these parts while these guys keep... Oh, apparently blowing this guy up. Wow. Okay, you guys are doing a good job here. I'm going to bring in our other... Heron, I think. We want something with pretty good PD, though. So I might bring out, at this point, maybe a couple of these guys. Because we need something that can take care of these little tiny shards. Because they're actually kind of a bigger threat than you might imagine. So let's go ahead, and we're going to try to take out this guy. They are a little... Hard to pin down sometimes. Ooh, here we go. Kill him. Oh, you're toast, dude. You're right where you don't want to be. <laughs> ah, thank you. Ah, oh, thank you so much, my friend. You have no idea. There we go. Let's even take out this guy next. Whew. You're quick. I don't want to get tangled there. This guy's coming after us pretty hardcore, though. Let's take him out if we can. Shut you down a little bit. Oof. No, thank you. Nah. I'm going to skip the cry of lamers. Thank you very much. Now, we've already got him down on armor in front. As you can see, he's got a little bit of chip damage on his hull. I want to try to shut him down and then vent right up in his face. Which usually is not a great idea, but... Ow! There we go. I'm trying to just put my butt toward him because my butt has more armor right now. Yep, take him out. No thanks on the Quiet Flamer. I'll skip that. Alright, have some more EMP damage. Oh, you're shooting down these little facets or aspects with your Mjolnirs? Alright, my dude. Oops. Oof. Ouch. Oh, there we go. Okay. We're going to vent aggressively. Because he's going to split again. And you'll see we now have different shards to fight. We now have Sinistral... Oh, okay, more Armor Breaker Shards. Okay. Now, how is the rest of our fleet doing down here? Not superb. Yeah, that's not the greatest. Okay. That thing's about to blow. I'm going to have you guys follow that guy. Sorry, my dude. You're toast. <laughs> You're just toast. 
But that should let us bring in one, let's see, 50 plus 15 is 75. We can then bring in both legions, and they should pretty much mop up here. Oh, I did forget to check their, ooh, their weapons, weapon groups. Dicey. Very dicey. Okay. Come on, my friend. Yeah, okay, one more down. Let's zap you. Oh, ouch. Cryoblast right to the face there. Ouch. Alright, my friend. Yeah, these little chips are going to be a real pain. But we need to take out these bigger bits, too. Okay. So, it looks like they took out our other griffin, which is a shame. And... Oh, our omens are still alive. Not you so much. Seven hull left. So, you go home. And we're going to bring out both legions and our other heron. I want the two of you to kill these guys. Hardcore. And then you get to come escort this guy. And you're doing surprisingly okay. I might send you out to, like, annoy him too. So ignore me. Go after that guy. That ought to do. Alright, we're gonna dump flux. Alright. Now, we're kind of helpless against these guys, because they're just... They're really fast. Like, sure, we can spend time trying to kill them, or... Our modes will largely do most of the work for us here. There we go. That's not so bad, actually. Let's go ahead and just... Can I get him? Ah, I got him. Nice. Okay. Wow, you get this so fast. And <laughs> uh, there goes our other Heron. Okay. Let's help take down this guy next. Lock you down for a second. Ooh, hello. Nice. Very nice. Oh my goodness. I think we actually have this in the bag, guys. This is my very first time that I've gotten close to beating these things. The very first time. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, look at that. Look at those flashes go. Wow. <laughs> Get off my monitor, please. Oh, I almost hit my monitor. I watched my lines of fire there. Nice. Nice. Oh, you're toast, too. Alright, well, I am going to vent, because I can. <laughs> wow, they just don't care. Oh my goodness, look at all that PD going on. Oh, these things are toast. Yeah, alright, fine. I'll stop you. I have to. You're going to make me do it, aren't you? Alright, you, Mondra, if you can, leave. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Gone. <laughs> You'd love to see it. You'd love to see it. Now, normally, in most fights, the fight will be over. However, these things have to actually be killed individually. Oop, sorry or you can't actually win the fight. Because they're actually that much of a threat, honestly. They're they're pretty tough for ships. Well, for fighters, I mean. Come on. Come on. Ah, oh, there we go. Are we there yet? I think we've almost got it. Hey! Not bad. Not bad. Okay. So we lost a big capital ship and three cruisers. But for that battle, that's 
in my experience, pretty good. I usually end up just sort of dashing my fleet against the rocky shores, cliff line shores of their uh, their ships. But let's go ahead and we're going to recover all of these. It's going to cost us a lot. There we go. And he'll pick through the wreckage. We get a chance to get some really unique weapons now. So way back when, you might recall when we went and got the ziggurat, or actually well before we got the ziggurat, there was a place in the far upright corner of that map with that sort of lone rogue planet that had a small cache of Omega weapons. Well, these are more Omega weapons. And we get the chance to pick up all of these. Now, the drop rate and the actual drops you get are random. So sometimes you might get a whole bunch of these guys like we got. Sometimes you might get a bunch of Cryo Blasters or I once got like six Resonators. These are pretty good. I like these a lot. And yes, so we get to actually play with these in a larger capacity. However, there is a limited number of Omega Weapons in Star Sector. Like, you, there's a certain amount that you can never get more than X amount. So if we wanted to, we could actually retry this battle. We could just save Scum and start again and see if we got better drops, but I'm not going to. So let's talk about... Hello. Let's pause what I'm talking about. So, at this point, we are able to approach the Coronal Hypershunt. Salvage crews board the structure at key points, and soon reports come in of extensive wear and damage. It is difficult to assess the entire structure in detail, but it is clear that it is not operable in its current state. However, as with most mega-scale domain technology from the late pre-collapse era, the Coronal Hypershunt features fantastic software repair capabilities, which requires only sufficient resources to be made available. So if we brought over 20,000 metals and 5,000 transplatonics, we could get this thing operational. And what that would do is that, it'll tell us here, your tripod chimes in with a helpful analysis. If brought online, this structure allows a colony within 10 light years to establish one additional industry, provided it has a hypersynth tap installed and can maintain a healthy supply of transplatonics. Ancient schematics in the tripod's memory indicate a particular cargo area dedicated to storing these taps, but salvage crews report that it is empty. That Tritacan would have this information so readily available in their standard Orbital Works expert system database gives you just a moment of pause. So we clearly can't repair this thing, and we don't have a purpose in doing so. Let me go ahead and leave. Ooh, I wonder if we can actually get back in there and salvage that for another round of uh, stuff. Let's find out. In we go. Come on. Come on, money. Do we get more or no? That's what I really want to know. Not really. Okay. Shame. <laughs> Sit here in the uh, solar flare for a bit. So yeah, so what we could do is we could, if we had a colony within 10 light years, and that would be basically... Let's see, one of these is... About three light years. So we can go a bit over three squares away. Now we're up here. <laughs> yeah, we're not building anything up here. So we could maybe, if we had a great planet in one of these systems, we could build a colony with a hypershunt tap installed. But our colonies are way down here. And since the other coronal hypershunt is here, we're going to be rendered unable to really make use of these. Unless we wanted to like establish a test colony somewhere else. But... There really isn't a huge point in doing so. They are horrendously expensive to maintain. So I'm going to head back to the Core Worlds. We are going to restock, mostly our, mostly restock our crew, because we are now below the 11,000 minimum threshold to keep everything combat ready. And then we're going to come back up to Beta Aang, and we are going to take on the second set of Omega ships. So I'll see all of you once we are ready to do that. All right, folks, we are back. We are hanging around Madeira Station in Tile, which I don't usually hang around, but it is the closest system, well, second closest, to Beta Aang, and it was full of cheap fuel. So that was the, that was the winning point there. Let's head out. We burn about 160 fuel per day, in hyperspace with these Invictuses and Legions, and I'm ready to uh, ready to get back to the, some cheaper gas and personnel, because we're dumping about 80,000 a month into uh, crew members here. 
But let's get our way up to Beta Ang. Okay, here we are. Of course, there's a solar flare once again. Let's go ahead and we'll save here. Now, I repaired our ships. I did see that something lost... What was it? Increased maintenance? Yeah, so you lost your increased maintenance. This guy picked up some demods. Eh, that's okay. I think what I'll do this time is I'm going to deploy these after our first deployment. That way they actually end up behind the Invictuses rather than beside them. And that should hopefully help their survivability at least a little bit. I guess we'll find out. Okay. Let's get this done. Let's actually get in there. There we go. E burn in, solar flare, and in we go. And we lost, again, only 1%. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and engage. We're going to keep the ziggurat. And off we go. Okay, so I'm going to immediately deploy these griffins here. Do I deploy these yet? You know, I'm going to hang off or hold off on those for a minute because they might just get wrecked. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. And we are going to back off. That's right. Uh, anytime, guys. There you are. Okay. So I want both of you engaged. There we go. Nice. Perfect lineup. I'm sure that battle line will totally hold. There we go. Oh, thanks. I'm gonna stay away from those cryo blaster bits. Yeah. Have some armor damage, my friend. Ah. Okay, well, you know what? I'll take it. Yeah. Ooh. That was a little dangerous. Took a tiny bit of armor damage there. That's okay. Can you just stop? <laughs> Seriously, my dude. <laughs> that weapon is a real pain in the butt. Okay, here you come again. All right. Come on, get close. I dare you. Get close. Yeah, well, let's do it. Let's do it. Get close for my Invictus. Oop, we lost our engines. Alright, we're just gonna hang out here for a second. We gotta get our engines to repair before we can do much else. Wouldn't mind shutting you down for a minute while our engines come back online. Hey, there we go. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to just stay away from that reality disruptor. Thank you very much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no. You're not supposed to be... Mm. <laughs> what is this nonsense? What is this nonsense? Okay, whatever. Should not be that close, ever. Bad. Bad Griffin. Ah, oh, yeah. Dump our flux. Dump that flux as fast as you possibly can. Woo! Okay, let's get... Oh, engines are out again. Never mind. You know what? Let's hit you. Give our Griffin a chance to recover a little bit. Even better, this thing's overloaded. That's amazing. So one thing to note about the Griffins and why I'm bringing these Squalls is that these guys have the Shock Repeaters, which is a very powerful EMP-based PD. Oh, there goes one Griffin. Of course you are. I think I might back off from this guy and just dump some Flux here. Yeah. But the reason that I use those is that they're kind of immune. I'll leave him alone. They're kind of immune to most of that because they're not guided past the first, like, tenth of their lifespan. Let's just do this. And so 
you kind of get to get around that issue. Oh, this guy's toast. And by this guy, I mean Mark Griffin. Boop. Come on. Ah, yes. Okay, got you. Dropping some of these. Woo! Spicy. Spicy meatball. Get him. Get him, boys. Get this guy next, I think. Oh, I don't go through me. That's annoying. Yeah, eat it, buddy. Alright, we're doing much better this battle than the first time around. Let's dump some flux. Let our moat take care of things for us. Okay, ooh. You're still alive. Which means... Ooh. Which means at least one of these Invictuses is not going to be alive for much longer. Why don't we get up here? Alright, I want you to kill that. I want you to kill that, too. And we're going to get up here and see if we can salvage one of these for at least another second or two longer. Maybe. Probably not. Nice toast. I don't want to be near this guy when he goes, though, to be honest. He's about to. It's going to be a real impressive explosion. Okay, but we'll deal with you first. Hello, friend. Nighty night, buddy. Okay. That lets us bring in our legions, and they're probably going to clean this place up pretty hardcore. Boop. Let's go ahead and just dump flux. Ouch. I lost a bunch of armor because of that. Disintegrator. Oh, yeah, you're toast too. The griffin is as well. Wonderful. Alright. Well, we'll be bringing in the herons here soon, I guess. To help shore that up. Yeah, I guess I could. Yeah, I could try to send you home. And save some money. <laughs> Uh, oh, Griffin, nighty night, my dude. You're toast. Unless I can get enough moats there to get him off of your engines, but nope, I cannot. I think we are going to dump some flux here as we can. Maybe. I thought we had a chance to. Okay, I guess not. Well, hello, friendo. Ouch. Oh, wow. <laughs> Those bombers, man. Don't flux. I'm still hurting pretty good. Ooh. Tell you what, this is a little spicy for us. Let's get back toward our legions and let them take some of this heat off of us. We're going to be a little bit slow in getting there. Because we're going to get a whopping 34 speed. Yeah, that's the Storm Nadler. They just keep going. They just don't stop. Nah, I'm going to pass on that. Alright, you get to buzz off. Let's see if we can get down here. Not sure that we can. Come on, my friends. Would you please save me? I don't have much armor left. Eh, eh. Ah, got him disabled at least. Mm. 
we are crawling. We're tiptoeing at 17 speed. Yeah, this is gonna hurt. Oh, there's this little guy that's coming up behind us too. We might be toast here. Oh, man. This guy just won't let up. My dude, would you take a chill pill? This guy has no chill. Ugh. Thank you. Yep. Storm Needlet at their finest. Would you get off that guy? Come on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Let's get this guy next. You next. Okay. Dump flux. What hurts? It hurts a lot. That hurts a lot. Okay. So we got him covered. You're doing okay, but not terrific. Let's let our moats do some work here. Of course, our legions have some pretty good PD in the form of their bombers and fighters. Beat it, buddies. Yeah, these little fighters just are nutso. Why are you turning around? Oh, you have no engines. <laughs> that makes sense. Alright, let's shut you down. Give you a chance to repair a little bit. Ow! The heck, you even hit me. Right. Not too shabby so far. Overall. So it's just clean up of these guys now. Which apparently take two shots from a plasma cannon to kill. That's pretty nuts. <laughs> Can we get more of these guys. There we go. Got him on the swing there. And just a couple more of these to go, looks like. And are you the last one? Bloop! Yes. Oh, man. I wonder, did I make this make it out? I didn't notice. No, it did not. Okay. <laughs> but we did get both of those down. We are golden. Ouch. Ouch. Ouch and ouch. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, we got a reality disruptor. Cool. Another volatile, volatile particle driver. Some cryoflamers. We hadn't gotten those yet. Disintegrator. Cryoblaster. Another resonator. Not too bad. A bunch of shock repeaters. And a bunch of mini pulsers and antimatter SRM launchers. This is a great haul. This is a wonderful haul. Okay, and we're going to just buzz our way out of here. Woo! And we're not going to bother. Uh, you know what? Just because I know someone will yell at me if I don't. Just in case, on the off chance that there might possibly be something in there. Let's go. But I don't think there is. I don't think it's possible at all. Ah, come on, get me closer. There we go. Nope, nothing at all. Okay, shame. Uh, solar flare. That's going to be expensive to repair. Eh, it'll buff out. Okay, well, that is, that was amazing for, for me. <laughs> I have never done that well in these battles before. Of course, I've never tried the dual Invictus with Legion as backup strategy before. And I know there are some people who can beat them with like a single Doom, 
but I am not quite that level of pilot. I'm, I may be like yeah, one level away, five experience points away. But yeah, that is that is not my forte. Taking on the really crazy challenges in the game, but there is one more Omega ship. So there are a total of five Omega ships in the game. We've beaten four out of the five. Now that we've taken out both of these Colonel Hypershunts and their threats, more specifically, there is a chance that once we get a high enough level contact and we get our rapport with them up pretty high, that they will give us a special million credit bounty for what's basically a full Ordo of remnants plus one of those Omega ships. And I have never beaten that one either. Uh, actually, so I have beaten these Hypershunts before, but I've literally never beaten the Super Bounty. Of course, I've only tried it a couple times, so that's not saying a whole, whole lot. But man, it ripped my fleet to shreds every time I tried. But I think we might have a valid strategy here, so it could be worth trying. So let's go ahead. We're going to buy some more people so we can at least repair our ships a little bit. Should get us over. Oh, no, we need 300 more. 843. Yes, okay, so we're good there. We'll need some fuel to get home. Some supplies. More supplies. There we go. And that was a much cheaper repair, oddly. Even though we lost fewer ships. The first time around was like 1,200 supplies to repair, which is pretty crazy. So let's take a look at what these do. These are some pretty awesome weapons. We have a Rift Torpedo Launcher. That's basically a guided reaper. Although it does cost flux to fire. Most of these cost flux even if they wouldn't, like, normally, because they're missiles. Like, these guys cost a thousand flux to fire. The resonators cost 50 flux to fire, which is tiny. But so we have a Rift Torpedo Launcher. Like I said, Guided Reaper does one and a half times the damage of a Reaper. And it has reloading ammo. So it reloads once every 20 seconds. It can only hold one at a time unless you have the expanded muscle racks and or the missile specialization skill. But yes, pretty powerful missile. This is the sort of slow red missiles you saw them firing. We have volatile particle drivers, which these kind of shoot a very fast dart, kind of like bigger mini pulsers, really, which are right down here. And this is an excellent anti-shield weapon. This might be something worth replacing on our Odyssey. Get rid of our autopulse lasers and drop this on because that way we can chew through shields much faster like a lot a lot faster and then we can use our reapers and stuff to take down whatever armor is underneath cryo blasters shoot that sort of single shot of blue goo and deals a ton of damage however it is fragmentation but because it's 1400 that's effectively what 360 damage or so to shields and or armor that's still pretty good per shot. And it shoots, what, once a second? So, yes, excellent weapon. Rift beams are point defense weapons. They create additional rifts that deal more damage. I've seen them used also as sort of close-in weapons and not in a point defense role. Disintegrators shoot a sort of beam or a blob that leaves like a residual acid on the armor and will really, really chew through armor fast. It deals 500 damage to armor over 20 seconds after the initial hit. So yes, crazy armor damage to these guys. The resonators are a great anti-shield. It's a shame we didn't get more because these are great in large quantities. But these are basically just sort of like sabos, only they don't release a burst. They just sort of shoot themselves at the enemy and they recharge. 10 seconds for recharge. The shock repeater is basically a lower damage version of the Omen's EMP emitter. Rift lances are great. These are actually, basically, they're small versions of the, if I can find it here. Ah, here we go. Phase lance. They're, they do less damage. I believe damage per second is 217. Actually, they're more efficient. Interesting. So they're more efficient. They do less damage in a single burst, but their damage over time is the same. And they fit in small mounts. Now, we've seen these before, the antimatter SRM launchers. These shoot a very fast, very great homing missile that recharge uh, pretty slowly, but they can store up to three at once. 
The Mini Pulsar is an excellent option for energy-based chips because of their lack of kinetic support, typically. So this is great for most, most of our fleet, really. These shoot little kinetic darts that recharge, and they are very powerful for taking out shields. Now we get to the Cryo Flamer. This sort of shoots a steady stream of Cryo Goo that deals a lot of DPS. It is energy, so it's not reduced by anything, whether it's hull or armor or shields. But it does, again, have a maximum of charges, and it does regain the charges pretty quickly. 20 seconds gives you a complete reload, which is pretty awesome. And then we have the Reality Disruptor. This sort of shot that weird beamy, bolty thing that would go blop, 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 blop at us with a sort of black blob lined in red. And this does, it does, it's, it's like a weird amount of damage. It's small damage, a ton of EMP damage. But I believe it actually deals more actual damage than 25. I'm not positive, but this will shut down a ship real quick, really quick. Anyway, folks, that's going to do it for the episode. Hope you enjoyed the attacks on Titan, if you will. The attacks on the Omega weapons or the Omega ships and their coronal upper shunts. And I hope you learned a bit about how to tackle them. Bring in the big guns and lots of them and all at once. I think in the next episode, we're going to take a look at some more of the ancient threats in the system, namely remnant fleets. And yeah, we'll see where we go from there. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, my name has been Kurazar. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.